In the final video of this three-part series, we're going to be taking our beautiful landing page, High Fidelity Mock, and coding it with CodePen, so that way we can move to a landing page. So grab that popcorn, let's dive in. We're going to actually have to go up here to the Inspect page. Now, Inspect uses a lot of positioning, and so you can see here, if I select this, it's actually positioned absolute. We will not be using this type of positioning. It's too concrete, but we will be using the styling. In order to do that, what I like to use is called CodePen. CodePen allows us to code without doing a bunch of extra infrastructure stuff. So down here in this white space, this will be our screen. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab this, and remember we got that color there, so I'm gonna just copy it over. We're gonna put in our body tag. Let's go ahead and now style the body. We're gonna say background, color, paste it, semicolon, boom. Now we're in dark mode. The next thing we're gonna do is our text here. And so we're gonna want this styling right here and the color. I'm gonna copy that, Command C. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna type in H1 and just paste all that. Now I'm gonna remove, oh, and then I'll type in H1, humdrum, forward slash. Now you can see that that's centered and that's because our actual container here, let's go up at one, it doesn't have display flex but this does. Okay, so that means we have to go up one more to the body, and we actually have to display flex the body. And then let's go ahead and get these elements as well and put that in there too. Text align, align items. So this isn't centering right now. It just makes me wanna do like over here. Let's go down, boom, now it's there. Yay! Okay, so that's what was missing. I'm not even sure I need these other items. Okay. And so we are going from Figma to HTML and CSS. We're going to ignore these positionings, but these pieces are nice. So that's going to be called our H2 and probably our paragraph. All right. So let's go here. I'm going to paste that in. Interesting. And somehow, there's two in here, two stylings, normal and light. So for the H2, I actually, uh, we probably don't need this piece here yet, 36. Let's come back over here. I'm gonna actually select this piece. It should be light. So we're gonna change it from normal to light. And I'm gonna put an H2 in here. It's gonna be called Music there before you for the anxious. Ah, you see how it's going from left to right? Okay, so right in here on the body, we're gonna say flex direction column. Align items center. There it is. So we're starting to pile up here. The next piece we need is the paragraph. And over here, we said de-stressing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's come over here, paste it in. You can't see that right now because we don't have any styling for it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is style it. Let's grab at least the color, put it in there, voila. And you see how we keep putting Helvetica on everything? See that? We're actually gonna put that on the body. Everything has Helvetica. Call it a day. Now this font style for H1 should be called bold, and it's already bold because of the weight, 700. So you could honestly say, don't need it. And what happens if I remove these items? Thing, great, we don't need those either. And I can grab the color as well, and we could put it here, boom. So everything will be that color. That's the parent. And you know what, we're kind of sandwiched here. So I like to go up to my view and just go ahead and do that. So now you can see on the right, our thing, and then on the left, we have our HTML and CSS. So we don't need these color items anymore. We don't need these flex items anymore. We have less code now because the body is the parent and all of these things are inside it. They inherit that parent's styling. Now this paragraph font size is different. So we were playing with that and the font size is 24. 
Okay, so let me grab this stuff here, font weight, size, and line height. Come back over here, and I'm just going to paste it in. Yeah, it starts to look good. Let me go really light on there, see how light I can go. Oh, I think we were doing uh, medium on that one and super light on that one. Let's take this off. What happens? Nada. Okay. Now, I don't think that line height needs to be that high. That one's cool. So what's up next is our input field. Now, remember, we got this from our friends at MailChimp. So let's go back to our humdrum.com website. Let's go ahead and log in and let's go to our pages and we're going to go to our landing page and there we got the donate but down here aha uh -huh, that thing we need to style so let's come down here to this and i'm just going to copy the whole thing copy and let's throw it in here paste okay perfect now we have a broken form wonderful let's try to give this some space just to see it a little bit now here is our styling this is the input field it's the enter the email address so it's super important this one is I'm just going to give it a little space here. Let's say if I if I did something like this, allow us to comment in the code. So we're commenting and I'll just say below is the button. And here I'll say below is the input field. I'm going to go ahead and give this. See, it's, it's MC field group. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to give it a class with this period and paste that in. And we said style is that. So I can now cut this. I no longer need style here. And I could put it here. Paste. Okay, max width. And it appears I don't even need that anymore. Let's go down to the next input field area here. And we have a bunch of styling here. So I'm going to grab all that styling. I remove it. Class required email. So all I need here is period email for now. And paste it in. And I'm going to clean this up so we can read it. And so already we're getting that down. There's no padding or anything in there. So that's interesting. So this is quite the leap. If I select this, double click, get down into it. They have used a calculation to calculate where it is in position. That's the input field. I just need that background color for now. They don't really have any padding or anything because we didn't use auto flow. So what I'll do here is I'll say background paste. Okay, there we are. And we also have this like really ugly form look to these things. So I definitely want to fix that up. Border none. Ah, cleaned it up. Now let's do that for our friend here. And let's see if he has a class. He has an ID and a class button. Perfect class button. All right, now we're going to take all his styling. Thank you. And we'll paste it down here. Okay. Uh, what if I remove this piece here? I'm just going to comment that out. Nothing really happened. So it doesn't look like I need it. But we will probably do something like display flex. Yeah, there it goes right away. Fixed it. So now that has a display flex, that container. So these two show up well. Next up, we also need to remove the border from that button, border none. Ah, looking more like what we thought. Now the width is 30% here and it's 70 there. So let me go ahead and remove this width and this width. See what happens? Great. Just breathes. Let's remove the display type too. See if it's messing with our flex box or not. Now we still need some padding in here because these look really tight. You can see in here, when I talk about padding, I'm talking about the distance from here to here. So that's about a 20 from there, uh, from top to bottom height, 20, yeah. So I like to keep it equal. So we got a 20, 20 there. Let's go to design just to make it 20, okay. And now let's go on the sides and it looks like we almost have a 50. So let's do 20, 50 on the padding. So on the button, I'll do padding, 20 pixels top, 50 pixels side. Ooh, starting to look good. Also, let's do the font weight, something like 700. And let's get our background color. Copy the hex. Background, hashtag, paste. Ooh, wonderful. And the color is the text color. And go to inspect. And there you have it. Here's the hex. Okay, we have our button. We need to do our input field. The input field 
it is different. The color of the text is a different hex. So we'll say color. Now it should be darker. Oh, that's a placeholder text. So let's go to here. Here's our email, but we also want to do email placeholder. And now we can access it and we want it to be the same color. There it is. We did it. We did it, everyone. Yay! Now we need the padding. So over here, you can see we have about 12 or 13. I think it's 12 from there. And we have about a 17 there. And we have about a 22 there. My intuition is that it's going to be 20 as well. And it looks like we're off a little bit here, but in code, that'll be fixed. Let's go ahead and do padding, 20 pixels. And let's do text align left. Now we have actually a width issue. We want to be very inviting. So let's do a min width of 380. Copy. Let's actually do a min width of uh, 300 pixels because 320 is the min. Yeah, that's better. Okay, the next piece we want to do is our image. And you can see here we don't have an image. I'm going to remove all this extra space here. You can see that this is the beginning of our MailChimp form. So that means this is the end. We want to comment that. End of MailChimp. And now below here, we're going to add our image. We're going to need a source. For today, I think uh, we'll just use this image. But we're going to need to export it. So let's go ahead and just export that. We're going to name it before we do. Hum drum UI in hand. Okay, something like that. I'm going to do 2x for retina. Let's export it. Now, CodePen doesn't host images for you. Thing. So what we can do is go to drive.google.com and we can go ahead and add a new file upload. And we recently saved that humdrum. Oh, here it is. Humdrum UI in hand. Open it. There it is. Go to that folder. Here it is. Voila. Okay, you can see it's got a little bit of a white thing at the bottom. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's get the share link. Come back over here and paste that in. There it is. Self-hosted with our Google. Thank you. Now over here, the width, when we go to inspect it, it's 463. Is it really 463? I don't know. I think it's more like 460 or 465. So let's come back over here and let's just give our image a class of image for now. And we can say image max width. Let's do 465. Here we go. Let's come over here, click save. But while it's doing that, we can actually come in here and style this. You see that this was always at the bottom, like pop. It's always there and it's cropping that hand off ever so slightly. So that's important. So let's try a different type of styling there. Let's take a look at our body and say uh, min height, 100 view height, which will fit to screen, see? And we want this piece to be at the end. Let's try flex end. Yeah, look at that. It does it. It created a lot of space. Oh, we forgot our little humdrum logo. Okay, so I'll just go get a um, white hummingbird logo. Let's go up here. Let's do another image. And we'll do a source equals paste. Here, I'm going to give it a class called logo. And come down here, logo. And what I'm going to do here is style that. So I'm going to say object fit cover. And I'm going to give it a max height. Now over here, our height of our logo was about 65, 65 pixels. Okay, you see how much smaller it got? Now we do have some extra space up and down on that. So it doesn't really work. So I'm going to double it. I'm going to say like 130. Okay. Now how do I get rid of that blue? Well, there are filters. Hue, rotate. This is 90 degrees. Now you see that turned it into magenta. It's almost believable. It's almost this dark purple. Let's start to play with the numbers. 85, 80, 70. We're getting closer. 60. Ooh, same hue. Too blue. 60. Okay. So we're so close. That's almost invisible. It's matching that. Now it needs to be darker. Okay. So let's come down in here to 
uh, put brightness in there and it's going to be a percentage so we're going to say brightness 80. Like a boom done cool all right and there we have it we have a, a responsive thing i'm going to go ahead and save this and link down in the description below all right that concludes our video of how to take your figma file to code using code pen and html and css this way hiring managers take you seriously you can embed code in your portfolio case studies and actually deliver to your co-founding developer partner so you can build your own web apps online. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like it if you liked it, sub if you loved it, and click the bell notification to be notified about future videos. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.